Ligand field theory, crystal field theory sometimes gets used synonymously. Crystal field theory is simply regarding ligands as points of negative charge. And ligand field theory is an extension of that where we go on to consider how the ligands actually bond with the transition metal center. So we introduce the idea of overlap of orbitals. But the patterns that we get in the splittings of these d orbitals are the same. So let's start off with a very simple uh, theoretical sort of mind experiment. If you were to take the d orbitals of a transition metal, so let's just take one um, for example, so let's take a dz squared orbital here. This dz squared orbital points along the z axis. If you imagine that you don't have points of negative charge as your ligands, imagine that you take your d orbitals, which are degenerate. In the gas phase, your metal ion has five degenerate d orbitals. They're all at the same energy. If you take those five degenerate d orbitals and you surround those d orbitals with negative charge, evenly dispersed, smeared out negative charge, what is going to happen to the energy of those d orbitals as you go to a surrounding of negative charge? So there are electrons occupying these d orbitals. Electrons are negatively charged. Is it favourable for a negatively charged species to be next to another negatively charged species? No. So that means it's going to be unfavourable. It's going to go up in energy. So what happens when you surround a transition metal iron with negative charge? is that the d orbitals go up in energy. So you see an increase in energy of the d orbitals. So if there was a situation where you had an even smear over the whole sphere of the ion, then all five d orbitals would remain degenerate, but they would be higher in energy. Okay, So that's the starting point. If you have a situation where you introduce a charge into there, you're going to increase the energy of the d orbitals. However, you are not going to introduce ligands as a smear of negative charge. You're used to the idea that transition metal complexes have certain geometries. Typically, the geometry that we're used to encountering in transition metal chemistry is an octahedral geometry. So let's consider an octahedral geometry of ligands around a transition metal centre. So what we have are our axes, again, I've drawn on here, and these are point charges. These are negative charges associated with the ligand. So if you consider a ligand as a lone pair donor, this is the lone pair of electrons. And so there will be a lone pair of electrons coming in on each of these axes. Now what we remember, hopefully, about d orbitals is d orbitals are highly directional. d orbitals point in directions. And we can distinguish different types of d orbital depending on whether or not they point along the axes. So we can see two discrete classes of d orbital depending on whether they point along the axes or not. So here I've drawn an example of the dz squared orbital. And the dz squared orbital points along the z axis. What's the d orbital that points along the x and y axis? dx squared minus y squared. So dz squared and dx squared minus y squared are orbitals that are point along the axes. Now, if those orbitals are pointing along the axes, they're pointing right at the negative charges. They're pointing directly at the negative charges. That means that the electrons in those orbitals are repelled most strongly and will move to higher energy. Okay? So in the case of those, they're going to move to higher energy relative. So if we start off with five degenerate d orbitals here, then those which are pointing along the axis, the two that are pointing along the axis, which will be, if we label them, uh, sorry, dx squared minus y squared and dz squared, those will go up in energy. So they're going up in energy because they're pointing along the axes. Now, if we consider the others, and I've drawn an example here. This, this is dxz. dxz is pointing between the axes. 
So dxz is as far as possible as it's possible to be away from these ligands. You can't get dxz any further away from the ligands because the ligands are on the axes and these orbital lobes are pointing between the axes. So relative to our situation of an evenly smeared arrangement, these are actually lower in energy. 